Now, Chris, thanks for taking time. Um, I guess you just uh, went off stage. First time Rock and Ring. Yep, first time here, and um, man, they made us feel really good up there. Really? Yes, yes, very happy. Um, also, if I'm, I hope I'm, 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 I'm correct here. Uh, the first time since 2014 in Europe or in Germany. That sounds about right. It's really? Been, it's, <laughs> it's been a while, and uh, we are we are very sorry that it took so long, <laughs> but we are glad to be here now. And only for five shows, I guess. Uh, yeah. Two in Germany, one in Switzerland. Yes, and uh, then the, and then we go to London. Yeah. Uh, why only those five? We'll be we'll be doing more next year. That's, the <laughs> That's good news. That is the hopes. Yeah, uh, because there are, there were a lot of bands who had to cancel their yeah. tours. Um, were there any? Uh, were your shows in in danger, too? Or uh, we had already had some stuff booked in the states, so we didn't have as long of a window as we would have liked to have to to make it, um, you know, a legit tour uh, in Europe. So hopefully next year we can make that happen. Nice one. Yeah. Um, you played a lot of. Uh, not a lot of, uh, I guess, six songs only. Um, yeah. Some of your latest uh, record, yeah. um, but also a cover song, uh, "Man in the Box" by uh, Alison James, which was awesome. Thank really. you, thank you. Um, but why did you choose that one? Uh, you know, I'm a huge Alison Chains fan, um, of course. But uh, <laughs> we we had kind of, it actually started when we were doing the acoustic. We did an acoustic tour during COVID. Um, live stream mm -hmm. we we're like what would that sound like if we just did that song acoustic it would be fun and we had so much fun doing it we decided let's do it full band because that song needs to be heard that way and uh we just kind of kept it in the set over mm -hmm. the last year and 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 we thought what better place to play it you know yeah <laughs> uh, you also did a cover of uh um, temple of dogs hunger strike yes and um as you probably know, it's uh, been five years since the passing of uh, Chris Cornell. Yes. Um, what are your associ associations with him uh, and his music? Well, uh, I was very lucky enough to meet him um, early in, in my career, when our right after our first record came out. Um, and he, to me, was, uh, I mean, he was one of my biggest heroes growing up mm. he was one of the the people that I, I call my my vocal teachers you know he was you know those records I would scream to the top of my lungs in, in my bedroom you know as a teenager uh, super unknown was was like the soundtrack to my high school mm. uh, years and um, I, I just have so much reverence for his voice his songwriting and what he did for rock music and um it, it was it was a song that i was always kind of afraid to touch because it was such an iconic vocal yeah. um, performance and and you know two of the most iconic vocalists in rock music you know it's like the 90s all wrapped up in one song yeah. you know <laughs> and and so uh, i wanted to make sure we did it justice and i was i was terrified to put it out <laughs> Because I was just ready for people to rip rip me, you know, in half. <laughs> like you don't touch that book, and everyone was was giving me a lot of a lot of good feedback. So it felt good to to you know do that. Not only did it feel good hearing that from the fans, but I felt you know like it was honoring you know Chris. Mm -hmm. I actually expected it to be on the set list today. Oh. Oh, <laughs> we've, Wait, never, you, we've never done it live. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh man, that's a that's a tough one right there for early in the day. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, maybe maybe one day we'll we'll get a chance to do that live. Do we have a favorite uh, Chris Cornell project? As he had a lot of bands. Oh, man, outside of Soundgarden, or yeah, just, uh, uh, I mean Soundgarden. It, it could be Soundgarden. Of Sound, course. Soundgarden is one of my all-time favorite bands. Mm. Um, so. I, I loved hearing you know the side stuff, but Soundgarden was was my was my gateway okay. drug to Chris Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also played uh, "It's Not Over," and as you said on stage, uh, it was the beginning of it all back in two thousand six. Yeah, it's kind of poetic, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> um, and you're an independent artist right now. Yes, and. Um, 
looking back uh, nobody with, telling me what i can't say <laughs> or do it's the best feeling the, ever <laughs> autonomy is great it's great yeah. i hope yeah <laughs> um looking back at all the american idol stuff um mm. would you do it again with everything that happened in between oh i i i you know i would I don't regret doing it. Mm -hmm. Would I do it again? Um, like if I had to go back in time, knowing what I know now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I would. I would probably. I mean, yeah. I, I. I never like to think about what could have been if I didn't do this because I did this and I'm here. So I. I would never want it any other way. Mm -hmm. So if that's what it took to get me here today, then then yes, I would do it all over again. Is it still a big thing uh, in the? In the U.S.? I don't think it's where it was, um, but I don't know if anything is where it was back yeah. in 2006, <laughs> you know, when when every show like that had Super Bowl numbers, you know. Mm. I, um, I think everyone's so, there's so much other stuff, like, right, everything is, um, it, there's so many uh, talent shows now that, that it kind of divides people, so... When I was on there, I was lucky enough to be on there when it was still kind of a, a new show, only mm. five seasons in, so everyone was still watching it. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I just think if it was the right place, the right time, and I don't know if I would, even if I went back now, if I had never made it, I don't know if the same thing would happen, uh, right? You never know. Um, you're not only making music, you're also a uh, comic artist. Ah, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very, very part time, like s super small <laughs> fraction of my uh, time gets taken up drawing now. Um, I feel like graphic novels uh, seem to be a big thing right now in in, in music. Yeah. Uh, like we, I guess Weird Al Yankovic did a thing well, Hail recently. Hailstorm has a graphic yeah. novel coming out. Pantera, um, um, Judas Priest, uh, Disturbed. Yeah. Does yeah we we've, we've talked about doing. Uh, we've talked about doing one. And oh, really? Yes. Um, and we were hoping to do it sooner than later, but it's one of those back burner type situations right now. Mm -hmm. um, but it is something that we've talked about for sure. With your pencil, in I the... would I would do the, <laughs> I would do a cover. I, I hate interiors. I'm not I'm not good enough. There are, there are more talented artists out there that are that are far better and more qualified to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, And I'm lucky enough to know a lot of them, so I, I, I have, I have some ideas, but I can't really <laughs> say much about it. Right okay. Now. <laughs> um, what, what's your all-time favorite comic, uh, comic story hero storyline? Story yeah. Well, um, Batman has always been mm. my, my you know, as a kid. I know that's so cliche because everybody loves Batman, but I why not? <laughs> I, I love Batman more than you. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Storyline, I mean, it's hard to beat Hush and The Killing Joke. Those those two are like mm. my top top two. Do you have a uh, favorite uh, like Batman um, actor? I, it, yes, but <laughs> now it's harder to decide because it's. I think Robert Pattinson killed it. Yeah, I thought he did a hell of a job, and I thought the story was great, and it was it felt very fresh and and it didn't feel like oh they're, they're just doing the same thing but with a different actor why are they you know it felt like a completely untouched take on on it and, and i thought that was what made it really cool and stand out but michael keaton was my you know when i was a kid i liked batman when i saw batman in 1989 <laughs> michael keaton my my head exploded and I've, i was like Fucking love Batman. <laughs> awesome. Uh, maybe so, as a nine-year-old, I may. I don't even know if I said that, but maybe I did. <laughs> so thank you very much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Um, all the best for the for the next shows, thank and you. Uh, see you. you next year. Then yes, that is the plan. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. Thank you.